Okay, let's go and take a look at how to find free data sets online in order to use them with our data, with our projects. At the very top here, the first thing that comes up when I do a Google search for free data sets is Kaggle. And we're going to use Kaggle here in a minute. I'm a big fan of Kaggle. There's, but there's plenty of other places to look for data. So let's go down. You can see these lists of free data sets for R and free data sets for all sorts of beautiful stuff. Let's do this one that has seven public data sets. This is from Tableau. Big fan of Tableau. We use it in class. Google Trends is a big one. National Climate Data Center. When you talk about federal data, we often talk about Google. I'm sorry. We talk about um, data.gov. So you may find yourself looking at data.gov. I discourage my students from using data.gov. It can get unwieldy. Uh, the federal government wants you to use data. Uh, and the majority of the time they find we find out um, that they're using let's look at say education there that there's two different types of data that's produced by the federal government one is really really big huge beautiful data hey bullying rates have dropped in 2015 um, and it's unwieldy and if you're a novice you're going to have some trouble uh, managing it and the other part of the data is i mean i can't even get to the actual data where is it fafsa completion fafsa initiative i mean this is just this is just a mess it doesn't even tell me i guess i have to go to the completion tool and then go from there and so it can be a rabbit hole that you jump into and that's not always great so try to stay away from federal data um Global Health Observatory, data.gov, there it is. Beautiful place to get data, beautiful. But if you're a beginner, it can be very overwhelming. Try to stay out of there. Um, one of the places, it's not listed here, that I like to go to for data is the World Bank or the UN. Uh, some of these guys try to uh, discuss data that is country by country. It's a good cross-sectional place to get data. You might want to try that. The other way that I would search for data is say data by state and then type in what you're interested in, income and education, right? And so some of this stuff is already going to be out there. Income data table, Census Bureau. Let's see if this looks like what we want it to look like. Data, 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 data. Don't allow access. Filter data tables by whatever income data tables, income and poverty. Let's just take a look at income and poverty. And some of these tables measured by certain characteristics. The good thing is that they put a lot of this stuff into Excel because the federal government does want you to use it. Uh, it can just be unwieldy. Let's see what this looks like. We'll do this in real time. Okay, so this is great data. But the problem with this data is that it's already consolidated for you. This is already summary data. This is telling me that there are, you know, 126,000, uh, 126 million households and what their medium income is. And all of this is great, but you really need to get this by state in order to compare all the states. And it can be hard to find. This is beautiful, wonderful stuff, but this is not presented for you to go out and run regressions as an example. Okay, which, you know, let's go ahead and run over to Kaggle where we found ourselves at the beginning. Again, google.com and we type in a search for free data sets. Kaggle really is exploding and, and has grown. I, I love Kaggle. Um, there are... Kaggle accounts who put up data actually have to describe their stuff a little bit. This heart disease, so here is Kaggle. You can search for particular data that you want. There are data compositions, competitions, if you're interested in that. If you hit data sets, it'll bring you right back to where we are right now. Um, and you can start searching through these. Not all of these are going to be cross-sectional, which is what you want. Ethereum Classic Blockchain, this guy is probably time series. I have a lot of students that want to do stuff on stocks and mutual funds and cyber and crypto and whatever. A lot of that stuff is uh, time series. It's not what we're looking for. Here in this example today, what we're really looking for is a cross-sectional database because we're going to end up doing... Um, a linear regression. So here's the heart disease one. The thing I love about this data set is that it's probably four or five people have, have published it. 
uh, and it actually tells me about the file. This data set contains 76 attributes. It comes from the Cleveland database. So when someone turns to me and says, how do you know your data is real? I can go back and say, hey, the Cleveland database is the one used by ML researchers to date. This is where this stuff comes from. Like I know uh, there's a reference here to this data um, and there's some great uh, details here that you may even want to include in your write-ups for your projects, right? Here on the right-hand side under columns is are all the variables that we could possibly use. And they describes them. So what is trust BPS? Well, I have no idea what trust BPS is, but it is probably resting blood. Okay, here it is. Resting blood pressure. Great. Cholesterol is total cholesterol in milligrams over, you know, DLs, whatever DLs are. Fasting blood sugar. Hey, look, if someone says, what's the maximum heart rate? I can actually describe this. But if you see a variable that says phthalic, Dude, I have no idea what that is. Uh, and so I love uh, Kaggle because a lot of these are going to have descriptions for the data. If I scroll down just a little bit, it actually describes what this data looks like. This looks relatively normal. So age is relatively normal. You'd expect a couple of older people to have heart disease. So that's deal. Resting blood pressure is relatively normal, right? It's a bit of a chi-square there. Cholesterol is relatively normal. I mean, this looks like it's going to be a good data set. And if you want to download it, you just hit, come up to the top and you hit download. And there it is. It should be, doesn't look like I downloaded it. Ah, yes. The one thing about Kaggle is that you have to register. So I'm going to pause this for just a second and sign in Okay, I have signed in now, and we're going to go ahead and try to download this puppy again. So, again, you download. That's the only thing about Kaggle is you're going to have to create an account. The account is free, but that shouldn't be a, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, the computer's running a little slow here. But that's okay. I'm going to pause it again so we can get the full download coming. So we'll download it as a zip file. And look at our downloads. And there is our zip file. Because it's a zip, I'm going to open it in a container um, under heart disease. Right click for this guy, extract all, have the whole thing pull out. Um, excellent. So here is my heart.csv file. Double click, it looks like a CSV. So that's beautiful. Excel recognizes it automatically. And boom, I am now in Excel and I have a good cross-sectional data set, okay? As long as we're here, one of the first, first things I like to do is minimize this so you guys can see it better. One of the first things I like to do in Excel when I'm dealing with data is lock up the first Deal. So I go to view, uh, freeze panes, freeze the top row. And now as I scroll through the data, the top row stays locked up. All right, so here I can look at this and I can actually create a regression by saying, hey, look, what is the relationship between cholesterol and age? That's a good cross-sectional data set, right? The older the person, maybe the more cholesterol they have. Resting blood pressure. Is there a relationship between the age of the patient and the resting blood pressure? There probably should be. Is there a relationship between, say, cholesterol and resting blood pressure? There probably should be, and so on and so forth. Kaggle then becomes a great place to have data sets. Let's go back to Kaggle real quick, and let's go look at more data sets. I like the heart disease one. Um, there are all sorts of interests here. Uh, some of them are even maintained by. But you can also have some trouble here. So here's 538, which is a website, which is a website by uh, by Nick. Um, what's his last name? Nick. Nick. Famous st statistician Nick, who can predict presidential elections. Nick. Um, what's his name? Nick Rhodes. Um, so here's a good example of a data set that we have to be careful with. So this is interesting. It sounds like it's going to be fun, and you need to go over here and take a look at it. And even if before you uh, uh, download it, um, you take a good look at the columns, and you're like, hey, look, wait a minute. This is interesting. Hey, it's got the names and the identities and all this kind of stuff. Here they are. 
Here's Batman, which is Bruce Wayne, and when he appeared. But this is not necessarily a great data set for a regression. There are no numbers. There are no numbers. Here's the total number of appearances. That's fantastic. And maybe there's a regression with the year that they've appeared, right? So maybe the older the comic, the more appearances they have. Uh, something like that. But there's not a, not, not a great digression to be run here. There's not a lot of numerical data. And so one of the great things that Kaggle does for you is that when you look at something that's interesting, you can take a quick look and see that, hey, look, this is interesting, but it's not what I'm looking for. You also can just do a search for the data that you're interested in, right? Texas, let's go back to uh, Texas counties and income and see if somebody's already posted something about this. Nothing. All right. Let's do income and education. Let's see what comes up. Ah, presidential elections, uh, basic vote by education, U.S. adult income. That might be interesting. Along our search, uh, cross validator for columns. This means nothing to me. So I know without having to download the entire data set that that's not what I'm interested in. Oh, but look, there's a different CSV. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Here are uh, individuals who are trained, their education level, uh, married, not married. Do I have income? Come on, tell me we have income. Capital gain, capital loss, hours per week that they work. United States, and then the bracket. Oh, so close. So this does brackets, right? Greater than $50,000 or lower than $50,000, but it doesn't tell me what their actual income is. So um, this would be good if you're doing a logistics regression, higher or lower than $50,000, but not necessarily a linear regression. And the great thing about Kaggle is that it allows you to spend some time on the website itself researching the data before you make a decision. Uh, what would I do? I'd come in here, I'd hit on data sets, and I would just look for data sets that maybe have good linear regressions. Or you could also type in linear regression and say, hey, look, here's a bunch of samples uh, on how to do linear regression. So here's serial ratings and linear regressions. That's interesting, right? Let the, let the thing do the work for you. You don't have to search every single one. Why is this taking so long today? And you'll see that some of these guys, oh, the problem here is that this is all R. But the good thing is that it shows you the data. So somebody has already run a linear regression on this in terms of uh, categories. And you can come over to the left and hit data. There it is. There's your CSV. And then you can play with that. See if that particular research doesn't hurt. Uh, and don't be scared when it when you see something like uh, these guys in the coding. It doesn't mean that you have to use it. All you're interested in is grabbing the data. Uh, hope you find something you like. You don't have to use Kaggle. Uh, you can use any data set that you like. I prefer that you use something real. And good luck.